In Brellas and laying hens, heat stress suppresses body weight, egg production, egg weight, shell quality, and suppression of feed intake. There are various strategies which can be used to control or minimize heat stress in broilers and layers, and it's either changing their environmental condition or by modifying their diets. And stress can result in panting, increased water intake, and eventually death. On this video, I will give six ways on how you can effectively manage heat stress among your chickens. Also, the first to the last sign a bed will show you in cases of heat stress because we have the safe zone and the critical zone for your beds during heat stress. And some bonus tips. Ensure not to skip because every second in this video is very vital. What's up my people? Welcome to Life of a Farmer Love. You can also follow me on my Facebook page at Life of a Farmer Love. I sincerely appreciate all my old and new subscribers and viewers also that are yet to subscribe. Please, if you fall on the letter, kindly click the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for prompt update whenever I upload a new video. Also like, comment and share for others to benefit. Without wasting your time, let's dive into the main cocoa. A simple way to better understand his stress is not just on the temperature alone. Let me explain it in the simplest way for you. Poultry beds such as the fast growing brellas and high producing layer beds are at risk of heat stress because they need a high feed intake. So the feed consumed, digested, absorbed and metabolized or broken down of the feed generates heat in the body. These activities will lead to heat stress when surrounding temperatures are high. Generally, beds lose heat in different ways. When the beds are too warm, they lose heat and one way is by convection. It's simple. You will notice the bed spreading its wings. In this process, the bed is losing body heat to cooler air. Another way the bed is able to control heat stress is by panting. This form is by evaporation. When the house is too hot, the moisture from the respiratory tract has to be used. This is what makes the beds to pant and this process increases airflow over mucous membranes. At this stage of panting, if panting is not effective and the body temperature increases further, the bed becomes listless, meaning it lacks energy and may die. In order not to lose your beds, here are possible ways on how you can identify heat stress in poultry beds, be it brellas or layers, step by step till it gets to the red zone or death. The bed will be panting and they will breathe rapidly. This is the first sign of heat stress as they are trying to release internal heat. Once nothing is done to help the beds, it will elevate to the second stage. At the second stage of heat control by the bed, you will notice the wings are stretched and feathers are erect. When the beds are overheat, they will stretch out their wings and lift their feathers in hopes of catching a cool breeze. They also do so by holding their wings away from their body to release the trapped heat and allow airflow against their skin. When nothing is done at this stage by the farmer, to help the beds, it will show the third sign which is pale comb and wattles. This area of the chicken is the only part of their body that has access of skin to air. So a lot of extra body heat lives through those extremities. At this stage the comb and wattle will become paler. A cool comb and wattle will help the bed to regulate its body temperature. So make sure to look out for paler wattles and comb during heat stress. These three stages a safe zone for your beds as at this stage they can easily revive an excessive heat during heat stress regulated once nothing is done then the next stage a critical stage please before i go further kindly subscribe to my youtube channel like comment and share for others to benefit thanks the next five stages are the critical stages in heat stress condition in poultry beds the first stage which i will say is mild stage falls within the safe zone and the critical zone is that they will roam less and lunge more. Walking, scratching and other activities by your best generate heat. What they will do at this stage is that they will roam less and not move around as usual. This is quite different from lethargy which is a more critical stage which I will talk soon about. The fifth stage is also mild and at this stage, your bed stop eating and drinks more water. Your bed will also eat less food than usual and drinks more of water to keep cool. Just like I said earlier, the digestion process itself generates some level of internal heat. So in this case, your beds tend to eat less once they experience heat stress. And now to the critical zone or red flag zone. 
Once your bet exhibits these following signs, then they need an emergency approach, which I will also explain by the end of this video. The sixth sign is diarrhea. At this stage, all the excess water consumed by your chicken when the weather is hot will lead to watery diarrhea. Though this is really not bad, but it results in less body moisture, which leads to loss of electrolytes and possible dehydration. The seventh stage is decrease in egg production in layers and weight loss in broilers. In laying beds, due to loss of stress in order to keep cool, layers will stop producing eggs. We all know that eggs are mostly water. A dehydrated bed won't have enough body moisture to continue egg production like usual. While in broilers, the bed will not be able to meet up its daily weight gain, leading to weight loss. And now the last stage is droppiness and lethargy. This is the most serious condition during his stress in broilers and layers. They will be very lethargic and lay down, not moving. Droppiness and lethargy are pointers to heat stroke. Once your bed shows this sign, then you need immediate action. At this point, your emergency button needs to be activated. And I won't leave you here. I will explain steps to follow in emergency situation for the red zone or critical stage. But first, let's discuss how to prevent heat stress, knowing fully well that prevention is better than cure. These approaches depend on where you live in. Prevention 1. Give clean, clear and refreshing water. Water they say is life. Brella and layers are self-regulators and they will eat and drink as much as they need. Giving enough water will help. Also, make sure that the water drinkers and feeders are placed in a shaded cool area. You can just add small ice cube to the water in extreme hot weather. But please and please don't place too much ice because an ice cold water can be a shock to a body that is very hot. Prevention 2 is to avoid overcrowding. This is to allow for free ventilation and flow of air. Overcrowding during heat stress can lead to pecking and cannibalism among your beds, so you just have to avoid it. Prevention 3. You can use fan or air coolers in your poultry pen. Prevention 4. Just provide shade to block out the sun's radiation and harmful UV rays. Then Prevention 5. Wet the pen. This is typical for battery cage system. Cold water helps to cool things down. Once water is poured on the floor, it will help to absorb some of the heat, creating cooler and more refreshing environment. The surrounding can also be watered to lower the ambient temperature of the surrounding air. Now to the much anticipated. In cases of droppiness and lethargy situations, which is the critical stage in heat stress before death. Here is the emergency measures and it's just a few steps to follow. Step 1. Bring out the beds from the flock, be it brella or layer, and place in a cool spot or shade. Step 2. Pour cold water over the bed's body or simply dip the bed inside cold water and remove. This can be done for 2 to 5 minutes and make sure not to dip the bed's head in the water. The severity of the heat stress will determine how long it should stay in the bath. Step 3. Use electrolytes. This is the savior of the day. Give electrolytes to your beds by hand by simply opening the beak and put in some drops. Electrolytes are a great source in helping to quickly revive a heat stressed bed. You can actually make your own electrolyte with simple ingredients in your kitchen. Just click the top right corner to watch it. I will also drop the link in the description box and also at the end screen of this video. Do well to watch it. Step 4. Isolate the bed completely from others overnight or for a couple of days for observation. Place water very close to the bed. In the absence of electrolyte, you can administer sugar water to the bed. You can also check out my video on how to use sugar for your poultry beds with the link up and in the description box. I will also drop it at the end screen as well. Please subscribe if you haven't. Don't fail to follow me on my Facebook page at Life of a Farmer Loaf. Please turn on the bell icon so that you won't miss my subsequent uploads. Like, comment and most importantly, share for others to benefit. Thanks and God bless. See you in my next video. Peace out.